Welcome to worship with the First Baptist Church of Middletown, Kentucky. My name is Jim Cobbin, and I'm the pastor here at First Baptist. This is like our living room, and we're delighted to welcome you into our living room. It's where we gather together every week to worship and sing and pray. It's where we as a church family gather to worship God together. I'm glad to welcome you here, and I want to invite you to pray with us, sing with us, Go get your Bible and open it to the scripture reading today in the first chapter of Acts. We invite you to be a part of our church family. Let's open our hearts to the Lord in prayer. O oh, loving God and Father, how wonderful it is when we, your people, gather together, whether in person or by video. We still gather in your name and we invite you to listen to us as we sing, receive our praise. And now come speak to our hearts, O Lord. Through our singing and our praying and our listening, may you be glorified in all we do as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> you enjoyed the Orf Quartet on uh, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. As we're thinking about how much it means to us to have that close relationship to God, we'll sing together Just a Closer Walk with Thee. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all Satisfied as long as I walk, let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Thank you. 
I'll be reading from the book of Acts today. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this commandment, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you in this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After this, he said, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way. You have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is our king, the lamb upon his throne. We'll sing together, crown him with many crowns. From my earliest memories, Christmas Eve meant going to Fairgrove, Missouri, a little town outside my hometown. There, we were either at my grandmother's house or at her sister's house, Aunt Zelma's house. And all of the cousins were there, and the kids from these two families would all gather. It was a lot of fun. And I would, of course, be at the kids' table, and the adults would be around the adults' table. Sometime during the evening, we kids never noticed that one of our dads slipped out the door. And after dinner, we would gather, and one of the kids would read the nativity story out of Luke, and I would do one of my readings that I was learning in my expression lessons. And someone would come out with this 8-millimeter silent camera with a light bar on it that was hotter than the face of the sun, and all of a sudden, Santa Claus would appear, and none of us recognized who it was. And all the kids would get presents. It was a great tradition, but like all these kinds of traditions, there was a time when my grandmother and her sister said to the next generation, all right, 
it's your turn. You take it now. And so they did. They continued that tradition for a while. And now many of them have passed and they have said to my generation, to my brother, it's yours now. You take it. My brother tells me that they still get together at Christmas time, all of the cousins do. I can't make it anymore. But now they meet on a week before Christmas and they all just get together. Those are great memories. But with all of these things, there comes a time in which one generation has to say to another, now it's your turn to do this work. This is a tale as old as time. One generation leaves, and another has to step up and take its place. I want you to see the story of the ascension of Jesus that Lisa read. In this same light, Jesus says to his disciples, both men and women who are following him, now it's your turn to do the work. Get the picture. Jesus was with his disciples, both men and women, throughout Galilee, all the way up to Tyre and Zidon, modern-day Lebanon, uh, down through the Galilee, even over into the Gentile part of Galilee, down in Samaria and Jerusalem and Judea, for three years or so. Jesus and his disciples are together 24-7. And then there's that horrible week where They end up in Jerusalem, and Jesus is arrested and tried and convicted. He's beaten and crucified and put in a grave. The disciples thought that was the end. But three days later, Jesus rose from the grave, and for 40 days, Jesus appears wherever they are. We know that Jesus appeared with them up in the Galilee. We know that Jesus appeared to them down in Jerusalem and behind locked doors. At a gathering of 500, Jesus appeared among them. And now 40 days have passed. And the disciples are led by Jesus out to the Mount of Olives. It's a special place. The Garden of Gethsemane is on the Mount of Olives. On the road that leads over the Mount of Olives to the town of Bethany, Jesus says to his disciples, now it's your turn. I'm going to give you the power, and now you go do what I'm going to do. And now, with their mouths wide open, Jesus rises into a cloud, and he's gone. Two men in white, Luke says, are stand there, are, are, are there, and they say to the disciples, Why are you standing here looking in the sky? I'm going to paraphrase. Didn't he give you a job to do? Well, now it's your time to go do it. Don't you think that would be shocking? Imagine Jesus was with them, and then he was killed, and then he was back, and now he's with them, and he's leaving again? This shouldn't have been a surprise to the disciples. Jesus said to Mary when he appeared to her at the tomb, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go tell my brothers, I am ascending to my Father and your Father. Later, the Apostle Paul would understand that this ascension of Jesus, Jesus ascending into heaven, was always part of the plan. Paul writes to Timothy, He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up in glory. Peter wrote in his epistle, his first epistle, this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand. Peter understands later that the ascension of Jesus was necessary and part of Jesus' plan. Now, we know that Jesus continued to reveal himself as Stephen lay dying 
in Jerusalem after being stoned by the followers of Saul of Tarsus. Peter, or Tim, um, Stephen says, look, I see heaven open. And there's the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Paul would say later that Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. Now, even though we know that Jesus is with us, we still have a tendency to stare a lot into heaven. The temptation is real, isn't it? A glimpse of glory is intoxicating and alluring. We like to sing the songs, In the sweet by and by we shall stand on that beautiful shore. Or when we all get to heaven, one of my favorites, What a day of rejoicing that will be. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away. We all tend to be like the disciples. We really like staring into heaven. And i got to say, it's nice every now and then to take a mini vacation and think about the beauty and the peace of heaven. But we also need to hear the words of the angels. Why are you standing here staring into heaven? Didn't he give you a job to do? The truth is, heaven will wait for another day. Maybe we can learn something, though, from reading the rest of chapter 1 of Acts. We follow the pattern of his disciples. We are told that the disciples, the men, the men who followed Jesus, of course, there were now 11 of them. Judas is dead. That the 11 of them regathered in the room where they were staying there in Jerusalem. Interestingly enough, Luke rearranges the order. We now have more or less an executive committee of Peter, James, and John. The women are there. An old, old insert into this story says they were the wives and the children of the apostles. But we know there were women disciples who had followed from Galilee, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. We know that Jesus' four brothers were there, James, Judas, Joseph, and Simon. And James, Jesus' brother, becomes the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. And later, his brother Judas will take that role and write the book of Jude in the New Testament. So as they gathered, men and women, disciples, there in that upper room, what did they do? They prayed. And they waited for the comforter that Jesus had promised them. And then they prayed some more. Now, it's as if Jesus is saying to them, it's your turn now. I'm going to give you the power because I was once the one who took care of you. Now it's your job to take care of my others. I healed the sick, and now it's your turn to heal the sick. I fed the hungry, now it's your turn to feed the hungry. I preach the truth, now it's your turn to preach the truth. I cast out evil, now it's your turn to cast out evil. I challenged the hypocrites, I called out injustice, I reached out to everyone, I embraced the outcast. I told them God loves them passionately, and now it's your turn to all those same things. I think that's the message for us today from this marvelous passage of Scripture. Now it's your turn to do the work that Jesus was doing. It's time for you to start loving the people who are hardest to love. There certainly is a time to receive blessing We love those, but there's also a time to be the blessing. There's a time to receive God's mercy, and now it's time to share God's mercy. There's a time to be trained, and now it's time to put your training into action. You have the power to be Christ's witness. 
He's handing the job to you and saying, I'm with you, and I'm helping you, but now it's your turn. In the 24th chapter of Luke, Luke tells part of the story of the ascension. He says, they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed at the temple continuously, worshiping God. After the ascension, they were filled with joy and enthusiasm. They had visions of what could be. They went to the temple every day. They shared their possessions so that no one went without what they needed. Many people were converted, and some of the visitors who had been in Jerusalem were converted and then went home and became witnesses for Jesus. But it wasn't long before the reality of their situation set in. First, the apostles were banned from the temple. And then any follower of Jesus was banned and the place where they knew to gather that was familiar to them. They could no longer go. Persecution broke out. Some of them were certainly arrested. We know Stephen was put to death. Certainly there were others. The church experienced internal conflict. And they had to write their first bylaws. It's a little bit of a stretch, but elect deacons in order to do the work. Loving and forgiving and reaching became harder. But it was still their job to do. And it's still our job to do. It's our turn to step up and do the work of Jesus. So here's what I want to say to you. Drink deeply from the well of Christ. Sink your heart into the Holy Scripture. Immerse yourself in the fellowship of the church. Quench your hunger and your thirst with Bible study and group prayer. And then hear in your head the words of your grandparents and parents, of your teachers and your coaches, of your preachers and deacons, and step up and take your turn. Because now it's the time. Last Sunday on Mother's Day, Christy and I left church and took our kids to lunch, and then uh, we went to the hospital to see her mother. For Mother's Day, Christy's mother wanted a strawberry shake. And our middle son, Bennett, and his wife wanted to go see his grandmother on Mother's Day at the hospital. And so they followed us. We drove through DQ and got her the strawberry shake and went to the hospital. And Christy went in first to make sure her mother was okay. And then she came out because only two could go in at a time. And Bennett and Megan, this young couple, went in to visit with his grandmother. And I couldn't really hear what they were talking about, but I looked through... The, the door and saw him laughing and chatting, having a real conversation with her. A few minutes later, I looked in and our 25-year-old Bennett was spooning that strawberry shake into his grandmother's mouth. I thought, maybe I won't starve to death when I'm in the nursing home. This kid's grown up. He's taking his turn. He's showing us that he'll be ready. When it's his turn, he'll pick up the spoon and stand up and do what's required of him. Will you do it? Amen.
we invite you to worship with us in person. Right now, we're meeting at 9.30 and 11 on Sunday mornings. You don't need a reservation. Just come. We'll find a place for you. As of last Sunday, we are, sti- we are now singing. We're still wearing our mask, but we are singing. I'd love to hear from you. Email me. Call the church. However you would like to communicate, we would always be glad to hear from you. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this sweet time of fellowship around the word and the music and around our time with you. Lord, protect us in the week ahead until the day we are all together again. We ask for your grace and strength in Jesus' name. Amen.